are live here in the sixth floor studio. Welcome into Cronkite Sports Live. I'm Tyler Mannion. Alongside me is this guy, Jacob Rudner. Jacob, you're looking good as always. And we don't have the HBO production team behind us here. They're in Tempe shooting some ASU football. But the people that I'm looking at right now, Jacob, in this studio, they're pretty talented as well. You know, I had the opportunity to watch HBO do their thing all week long covering ASU football. And we're going to talk about that on the show today. But before we talk about HBO, we have to talk about the team they covered, talk a little bit about ASU football. And to help us do that, we bring in WCSN football analyst Alex Gall, who's live in Tempe to help preview the matchup between the Sun Devils and the Washington State Cougars. Alex, thank you for joining us on the show. Can you tell us a little bit about a couple keys for this week as ASU gets ready to take on the Cougars? Yeah, the Sun Devils are heading into a really big couple of weeks. They have Washington State here at home this Saturday. Then they travel to Salt Lake City for a matchup with the ranked Utah Utes. Both of those games will be in the afternoon. And for Coach Rob Likens, it's about spreading out the offense, especially in terms of the passing game. When you spread the wealth around with your receivers is when they get out to practice, it's not, you know, they practice harder because they know, hey, man, I caught a ball in the last game. You know, and so it's a totally different mindset. It brings more juice to practice, more excitement for those guys. And then when you have more excitement, more juice, everybody, it's just a, an effect that just takes place and you get better and better. And that's why I like to play a lot of guys at wide receiver. And for Coach Rob Likens and the Sun Devils, they kick off their game with the Washington State Cougars 1230 this Saturday at Sun Devil Stadium. But for now, in Tempe, Alex Gall, back to you, Jacob. Thanks again, Alex, for joining us today. For more of his content, head on over to CronkiteSports.com. Here's a sentence you don't hear every day. Big news out of special teams this week for ASU football, as kicker Brandon Reese announced his decision to transfer. Reese was highly touted coming out of high school and decommitted from Alabama before deciding to spend his college career in Tempe. But everything changed this year when he got injured, and walk-on Christians and Dejas filled the role well enough to earn a scholarship. The next step for Reese is unclear, but wherever it is, it won't be in Tempe. HBO's smash hit Hard Knocks has made its way to college football, has the lights, cameras, and masterful cinematography. Follow four college football programs in an all-access look at the inner workings of the game. Arizona State was one of the four schools, and our Jack Lottery has more on the Sun Devils' appearance with HBO here in Sun Devil Stadium. Arizona State's coming off a bye. They beat Cal two weeks ago, and they're ranked number 18 in the nation. But that's not the biggest headline in Arizona State University this week. They're getting ready for another daunting task in Washington State, who's coming here to Sun Devil Stadium this Saturday. But that isn't the only thing going on here in Sun Devil Stadium this week. A film crew from HBO is here following around the Sun Devils and Coach Herm Edwards for their segment of the documentary that is going on on HBO. Well, once they get in the building, it, it, nothing distracts us. It's how do you handle all the stuff outside the building, you know, and that's the whole key of prior, prioritizing, you know, you, what you do every day. And the one thing we do understand in college football, no different than pro football now, we have them for 20 hours in week 17 total. What do they do when they leave the building? Now, the Sun Devils are going to have to deal with those distractions all week long. The film crew is here. They showed up last weekend, and they're here through this Saturday filming the game and the preparation going up to the game against Washington State. When you're a coach, I think the team takes on your personality. Get up there! Don't be afraid of these guys, man. Our quest here is very simple. Put them in position to be better men when they leave this institution. Bang! Boom! Ready to compete! Here we go! Play the ball! Play the ball! Ah. Reporting in Sun Devil Stadium, I'm Jack Lauderre, Cronkite Sports. While Herm Edwards' squad has just one loss on the books, Lindsay Ellis' team does not. The Sun Devils' women's hockey team is off to a perfect 6-0 start to start 2019. And joining us to tell us more about their success, we bring in WCSN's women's hockey analyst, Reagan Smith. Reagan, thank you so much for joining us. With the Sun Devils off to a historic start this season, can you tell us about what has gone right in their stellar performances so far. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me, Jacob. Well, the first thing I noticed with the first ever practice I went to was that this team was, A, just so much faster and B, so much more aggressive than anything we've seen in previous seasons. And you know what? It's a big reason to why they are 6-0 and right now. You put in an aggressive four check and just keeping the puck inside the zone and you get some stellar offense. The speed, they're just flat out out skating every opponent they've played so far. So far, they have 28 goals for and have only allowed five goals. That's a plus 
23 goal differential. And because of their deadly forecheck, it is probably the key reason as to why they're 6-0 in the season. Earlier this week, head coach Lindsey Ellis announced the captains for this season. Who will be wearing a letter for ASU's women's hockey? Well, I don't think it'll become, uh, come as much as a surprise, but sophomore Kat Jones will get to wear the C for the team this season. I got to speak to Coach Ellis after Wednesday's practice when she announced it, and she basically touted everything positive that she's a hard worker. She comes in, she communicates, and the freshmen that have joined this team echo that same thing. They're looking up to her, and because of that, Ellis thinks she was the most deserving to get a C, and she even called it a pretty easy decision. To support her though, you have two seniors in Molly Potter and Jordan Nash Bolden. Keep in mind, there's only three seniors on this team this year. And so to have two, two of them as the captains and take over that seniority leadership role, that's key. And finally, you have sophomore Danielle DuPont, who is one of the hardest workers on this team. If she's not giving 110% out on the ice, there's probably something wrong. And just how much, uh, just her overall effort is more than enough, I think, to warrant that alternate captaincy. You mentioned it a second ago, but the Sun Devils added nine freshmen to the program ahead of this season. What kind of impact have they made so far? Well, when you add basically half a team of brand new freshmen, you really hope that they can produce. And you know what? They've had, of the team's 51 total points, 22 of them have come from freshmen. However, there are two freshmen I want to focus on, and that is Andy Main and Abby McGee. Andy Maid's a forward, and although she hasn't scored any goals this season, she is finding the open targets on the forecheck. She's getting those passes to wide open uh, players, and they're putting it into the back of the net and you know what as a forward you love to find someone that's able to put the pucks into the back of the net and then Abby McGee herself the defenseman you expect her to have more assists but in fact she's the goal scorer of the defenseman she she's not afraid to throw her body around and you know what if the defense can't stop her then you know what you got to keep doing what you keep doing best and that's scoring goals she's going to attack the net and you know what no one's been able to stop her so Abby McGee you keep doing you Reagan Smith, a wealth of knowledge about ASU's women's hockey. If you want more of his content, head on over to CronkiteSports.com. From a hot start to one more like the ice, both teams play on. Sun Devil men's hockey dropped their home opener to Mercyhurst last weekend and squeaked out a 6-4 win the day after. Now I know what you're thinking, but relax ASU fans. That really low roof isn't caving in at Oceanside quite yet. Greg Powers' team outplayed their opponents in both games and just lost a weird one in that opener. But if they want to live up to the hype that last season created, they'll just have to be better. At practice, Power spoke about the mindset of the team heading into this weekend. Be better at going into Friday and, and, and just worry about us. And so that's all you can this early in the season. You have to worry about yourselves. You can't worry about you know, who it is that you're playing. Um, we know how good they are. We know how tough it's going to be going up there and getting a win on Friday. But um, our guys believe they can do it if we play the right way. Well, we are just about one hour away from puck drop in Minnesota as the now unranked Sun Devils will take on number three overall Minnesota State. But for now, we send it to Tokyo as our own Amir Muhammad explains in this week's edition of Impact. Thanks guys. The Tokyo 2020 Olympics are approaching and the Pac-12 will be well represented in the games, more specifically on the diamond. The USA softball team has selected a record nine players hailing from the Conference of Champions. While the majority of the selectees are former players, three of them are active. Rachel Garcia and Bubble Nichols of UCLA alongside Deja Molipola out of Arizona. The USA team has been historically dominant, taking on the gold in the last three out of four Olympic appearances and the last seven world championships. If the ladies follow through on what should be a successful Olympic circuit, not only will they be able to say they played in the Conference of Champions, they will have become the ultimate champion. Last week, there were push-ups on this segment, but this week, we don't know what's coming. Sun Devil social media time, and here for that is Alex Coyle, our Sun Devil social media expert for this week. Alex, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me, Tyler. Got some great things planned for you. We're ready for it. Let's hit it with us. All right, so we're going to go right into, you could say Remy Martin, he plays with a lot of energy. You could say he plays kind of like a kid at heart. <laughs> yeah. Well, he got to celebrate with those kids a couple months ago, but he took to Pac-12 Media Day to talk about the celebration he had after his team took a big win at the Bobby Hurley uh, basketball camp. Let's see what he had to say. Honestly, that, that's all time. No, that, no, that's all time. That's all time. I, that's in a category of its own. Of its own. Okay, that's in yeah. a category of its own. <laughs> Tell me no, why. Those kids were. Honestly, that, that's all time. No, that, no, that's all time. That's all time. I, that's in a category of its own. Of its own. Okay, that's in yeah. a category of its own. <laughs> Tell me no, why. Those kids were amazing. Honestly, honestly, that, that's all time. No, that, no, that's all time. All right, that leads me into the question for today. Celebration, what's your best 
memory from sports as a kid playing? <laughs> okay, so mine, you're gonna have to go back to my sophomore year of high school, but I was on the oh freshman boy. basketball team. Sophomore, freshman team, don't ask. Anyway, uh, we're playing in the varsity gym. Good opportunity for me to shine, you know. All my friends are there, but all my three of my friends were there. And this kid goes on a fast break, pin down block, chase down LeBron James. Wow. Nope, it was me actually. It was Tyler Mannion Congrats. on the freshman team, and that's that's the highlight of, of my life. Honestly. What about you, Jacob? The sophomore freshman LeBron James. <laughs> yeah, really that's me. That's my brand now. Well, so I was LeBron James of my own. When I was in seventh grade, I was on the basketball team. We're going earlier. Yes, much earlier in the year. Seventh grade basketball. I didn't play a single minute all season long. Last game of the season, I had a rebound in the final four minutes of the final game. Best moment ever. Pad that stat sheet, kid. Well, you can tell that you guys are very athletic through those. <laughs> now, can you guys skate is the question. I can't. Can you? I, I can kind of. I pretend well. I can't stop myself. Go. I crash into the walls to stop, but I can move. Now, can't we agree that hockey players should know how to skate or at least be on the ice without falling down? Probably. Yes. Probably. Well, Jordan Nash Bolden, the goalkeeper of the women's hockey squad, you can see it here celebrating a big win and goes up for a chest bump, and down she goes. <laughs> Reed Harmon, our own Reed Harmon with the tweet there. and Capital J journalism by Reed go. Harmon. Hard hitting. Hard, the ice is hard hitting on Jordan Nash uh, Bolden right true. there. I, see, see, they have that, that thing in, in uh, Cityscape, right? Yes. Around Christmas time. And Valentine's Day as well. Valentine's yeah. Day, and you can go, you take your significant other, well, you have to have a significant other for, for that. That's a whole other discussion. We don't need to talk about that. Okay. But Jacob, I've tried to go with some friends, and, and it doesn't go well for me. Because you can't skate. Yeah, I, it goes pretty much about like that, not going to lie to you. Well, you just do the falling part? The falling part is my favorite part. Okay. With some hot cocoa in hand. There you go. But now maybe he, you guys can go couple skating and he can teach you. Let's do it. No. Can we just right here? Just this is no. <laughs> help. No? <laughs> All right, let's move on to some other skillful uh, attitudes. Josh Christopher, a potential Sun Devil recruit. He's ready to put in some work and get to the NBA. Well, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, he's singing in front of the Pelicans home crowd. Now, I've got to ask you guys, if you had to be in this situation, what would be your go-to karaoke song? Okay, so mine's inspired by Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Jake Peralta sings, I Want It That Way, Backstreet Boys. And it's my favorite scene in the show. That's the go-to. That, that's my go-to. Wow. you got to love it. How about you? Mine's the CSL intro song. <laughs> you got to love, love that, that. song. Yeah. I mean, how, how do you not? <clears throat> that, that, you know, that's a good choice. I'm not going to lie to you. Thank you. That is. It should get you pumped up every time. Now, it Tyler, does. i got it a does. question for you. Okay. Or, or you, if you want to sing the intro. Nope. Do you want to sing the song for the viewers out there. I feel like I have to. Nikhil Alexander Walker killed his. He just owned it. So this is it's it would be cringy, but I'm just gonna own it. We might as there well. You go. Oh, all right. <clears throat> I'm gonna need some American help Idol. though. I'm gonna need some help. All right. I'm ready. all right. All right, ready? Yeah. Again, I want it that way. Mm -hmm. Backstreet boys. So Sounds good. <clears throat> ready. And the cop gun. Yep. I want it that way. Tell me tell why. Tell me why. Uh, tell me why. Ooh. Ain't nothing but a heart. Tell me why. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a mistake. Tell me why. Yeah. Oh, uh, one more. I never wanna hear you say. Jacob, finish me off. I want it that way. There you yes, go. Yes, sir. Well, appreciate that, and thanks for having me on again. Teamwork. Gotta yeah. love it. Gotta love the singing. <laughs> thanks, Alex, for being here. Thank you. This week, the Sun Devils sit-down is a little different than the ones we've had in the past. WCSN's Michael Gutnick sat down with the ASU Ultimate Frisbee Club team to tell their story. Hello and welcome into this week's edition of Sun Devil Sit Down. Now we're going to change things up a bit this week as we're going to dive into the world of Ultimate Frisbee at ASU. I'm Michael Gunnick and joining me is ASU Prime's president, CJ Sowards. Now I got to start off. Have you ever been in this type of a situation in this interview before? I have not. I've never done a sit down interview, but I'm really excited to see how it goes. Just to start, give us some background on ASU Prime and just how the, the club has evolved over the last three years. Sounds good. Um, so uh, I'm a junior, so I'm very knowledgeable on the last three years. Um, my freshman year, we were very senior heavy as a team. Um, I sat the bench, but I played my role. We were a pretty solid team. Uh, we went to regionals that year, and it was a lot of fun to be a part of. Um, last year, we graduated, as I said, you know, 13 seniors. So last year was a rebuilding year. Uh, we had about seven rookies last year, so we're a very young team very young team going into this year, um, but last year we um, didn't make it to regionals, but this year we're looking to change that. One thing that many people may not know is that ASU's presence is well known at the AODL level uh, with the San Diego Growlers team. 
Um, how has that representation at the highest level just affected the, your development for the program? It's actually helped a lot. Um, when we talk about recruiting in the fall, um, we talk a lot about the players at the AUDL. This year we had an MVP finalist, Travis Dunn. He's an alumni of ASU. Um, probably one of the best players, if not the best player, to come out of ASU. Um, at try or at recruiting events, we would talk about you know our presence on the AUDL and the San Diego Growlers because we have about four alumni on the Growlers. So we talk about them a lot and a lot of people get really intrigued because they don't really know that there's a professional league, but when they find out there's a professional league and that we have representation from our alumni, they get really excited. What do you want the audience to know about your team? This year, um, last year, you know, we're really focused on chemistry and that's helping us grow as a program. Being a lot closer together as friends rather than just teammates, it's helping grow our program a lot and it also helps people buy into the program. That's ASU Prime's president CJ Sowards. I'm Michael Gunnick. Thanks for tuning in to this week's Sun Devil Sit Down. For be on the lookout for all of our content on CronkiteSports.com. From a sport we don't typically cover to one with a killer coverage team, we bring in WCSN volleyball reporter Valentina Martinez for her CSL <laughs> debut. Valentina, welcome to the show. Thank you, Tyler. Glad to be here. Well, it's great to have you on, and I'll throw you right into the fire with your first question. We know this team's been up and down throughout the season, but how can this offense improve? Well, we've seen snippets of a solid Sun Devil offense in the first few conference games. This is when the outsides, the sets are going not only to the outside, but also to various hitters like the middles and right sides. Uh, middle blocker Megan Beatty went 7 for 16 against Utah this past weekend, putting herself in the leaderboard in kills. Unfortunately, ASU setters are going mainly to the outside because it is the most comfortable position to set, but this makes their offense just too easy to read, and frankly, they can't execute because of it. Also this past weekend, Colorado put up 16 blocks against the Sun Devils because, once again, their offense is just too easy to read. You can't be too easy to read in sports as an offense. Defense is always going to win that battle. But that was against Colorado. Now they play Cal, number 16th ranked in the entire country. How is that game going to go? Well, I think Cal is a sol solid volleyball team. Uh, they have power hitters not only on the outside, but also in the middle. Senior outside, uh, Mima Mirkovic is leading the, the Bears with 164 kills this season. If ASU wants the match to be a close game, they're going to have to play the way they did against U of A, probably even better. Uh, playing a team like Cal, you can't afford to have bad eye work or a ton of service errors. Uh, ASU is really going to need to step it up and get the offense going. Valentina, great debut here at CSL. For more of her content and the rest of our volleyball coverage team's content, head over to CronkiteSports.com. Pac-12 women's basketball is on the horizon with Pac-12 Media Day taking place last weekend. Here's a look at what Charlie Turner Thorne had to say about ASU's women's basketball team in San Francisco. As we've already alluded to, I think that we're going to be able to take more away. I mean, we play in the best conference in the country, hands down, not even close. We're playing against... Therefore, some of the best offensive players in the country. And so I think we're going to be in a position maybe to, to guard them a little harder, shut down some people a little bit more consistently. And then on the flip side, I, I, I've, I've been joking today that we were the best shooting team in the country in warm-ups last year. Like, we would literally go and barely miss a shot, you know. And, and I really think we have the potential to – that are great shooters and get our shooting percentage up into, you know, 47, 48, 49 percent like the elite teams in the country. Um, that's our goal. I think we have the ability to do that. We're working towards that. While ASU women's hoops hasn't played a game yet, Sun Devil soccer has. And we've actually talked about them a decent amount here on CSL. I even did a reader back at the monitor with a crazy moving graphic that went all around the world. But on the field, this team hasn't been doing too hot. They're winless in Pac-12 play and currently sit in the basement of the conference, dead last. Sunday, it doesn't get any easier, with 15th ranked Washington State on the docket in Pullman. If these Devils want to turn around their season and fight for a tournament berth, it's going to have to start with an upset win two days from now at 1 p.m. But now in tragic news, last weekend the Sun Devil Athletic family lost one of its members. The mother of former ASU baseball star Hunter Bishop passed away. For the Bishops, baseball is in their blood, but family trumps all. 
Hunter Bishop was a star outfielder for ASU the past three seasons before getting drafted 10th overall by the Giants in June. His brother Braden was also a standout outfielder at the University of Washington and is now in the bigs playing for the Seattle Mariners. To say that baseball and talent runs in the family would be an understatement, but the brothers would agree that they play for more than just success on the field. They play for mom. Their mother, Susie, was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's five years ago, and together the brothers started the charity foundation for mom to help raise awareness about the cruel disease. Through several charity fundraisers, walks to end Alzheimer's, and awareness events, the bishops have used their platform to help spread the word in hopes of improving the lives of those affected. After five years of fighting, their mother Susie lost her battle to Alzheimer's and passed away last weekend. If you are a baseball fan, you know that the baseball community is like no other, and the baseball family may have lost an angel, but Susie's legacy will live on through Hunter, Braden, and the work of the Four Mom Charity. To learn more about their cause and how you can help, visit fourmom.org. Tyler, it is time for my favorite segment on the show. It's time for the way it is. Tyler and I are gonna ask each other three questions. We're gonna answer them to the best of our ability and then the people in the studio are going to pick who they liked the best, who answered the questions better than the other. The winner will be able to do a monologue at the end of it all. And I'm gonna get it started with question number one. Tyler, who will have a better season? ASU's women's hockey team or the men's hockey team? I'm going to have to go with the women's. We heard all about them from Reagan Smith earlier. Those captains are young. They're good. They've got nine freshmen. They score a lot of goals. That goal differential is already through the charts, and I think they're going to keep it going. Okay. I'm going to disagree with you. Big shocker. <laughs> ASU men's hockey. They split the opening series to Mercyhurst. They won the second game. They lost the first one, but I think that they finish off the season just as strong as they did last year. I think men's hockey is about to have an unbelievable season. Fair enough, but we switch to football now. So they came off a bye week this week. They're playing Washington State. Are they gonna win though? Okay, I said it before, I'll say it again. ASU wins this game 31-27. I'm gonna give a score prediction. I expect you to do the same. 31-27 ASU, it's gonna be a battle. Washington State offense versus ASU defense. Sun Devils on top. Okay, but here's what you're forgetting. ASU is ranked. ASU doesn't win when they're ranked in, in pretty much any wow. big major sport on the men's side, generally speaking. So, and you want a score prediction, I'll give you a 27-17 Washington State. Okay. We're going to talk, I said about winning, you did too for Washington State. Now we're going to talk a little bit about losing. To the chagrin of many ASU students, the Dodgers found a way to choke again. So, my question to you is along those lines. What is your worst sports-related memory and why? Does it have to be as a fan or can I throw a little playing experience in there too. Uh, we can go with anything, so sports related memory. All right, we're gonna go back to high school, but we're gonna go back to my freshman year instead this time, instead of my sophomore year. We're gonna go to track. So we're in the league championships of the 400 meter race. My dad's in the stands cheering me on. Sorry, dad, about this. You haven't really heard about this being the reason I quit, oh, but boy. I got the pity clap. Jacob, I ran oh. a PR, that means personal record. I ran a PR and got the pity clap. I was so far behind everyone. Terrible Your best moment. time was the worst time. It was literally the worst time in the race. It was great. Wow. <laughs> well, my memory from before during the social media segment is my memory now. <laughs> I didn't play in seventh grade <laughs> basketball. That was the worst ever. I didn't do anything on that team. Worst memory by far. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. You got to play. If you're not playing, you're not going to have a good time. Oh, it was the easily just the worst <laughs> experience. But the good news is I get to pity clap you. As uh, I win the way it is, I don't I'm like going to get the monologue. I don't like that you can tie in my answer to your reason why oh, you should win. Look at the clapping. No. People at home. No, no. You see put the, the clapping, clapping away. I know I can find your hands. You there they are. You just reach into my shot. Yes, I did reach into your shot oh and I put your gosh. hands away because I should win this. <laughs> now you're going to lose for sure. You just broke TV rules. <laughs> no, okay. You know, Ready, watch me this is live Here television. You're not going to get bigger. I'm going to get bigger. I'm about to Troy grow. in the studio is going to pick me because I clearly had the best answers. Ha! Classic. Pac-12 football is, in a lot of ways, like a treadmill. It can run faster and faster towards becoming a respected conference, but as much speed as it may add, it gets no closer to its goal. In week two, Washington was upset by Cal at home by a point, and thus began the trend of Pac-12 teams tripping over each other, further removing the conference from relevancy and ever-coveted respect. Next weekend, the Pac-12 has a rare opportunity to boost its ailing resume. Arizona State will travel to Utah. Both teams will likely be ranked. The battle may help decide the Pac-12 South. And the Pac-12 opted out of a national ESPN broadcast, keeping it on Pac-12 Network. ESPN2 reaches more than 80 million households. 
ESPNU reaches more than 65 million. Whereas the Pac-12 networks, it reaches 17 million households. One fifth the audience ESPN2 has. The decision to keep what will be a crucial Pac-12 matchup on a network that reaches a mere fraction of ESPN's larger outreach was the Pac-12 tripping on itself taken one step further than teams beating up on each other. The Pac-12 deliberately chose to keep what will be a huge matchup mostly a secret and off of the records. So instead of continuing the treadmill running of the Pac-12 being its own worst enemy, it may be time to open the conference's eyes, as the, Pac as the Conference of Champions has done little for itself on the long road back to stardom. And that's the way it is. Good reader there, Jacob. A questionable decision by the Pac-12, but these plays are undeniable. Top plays, we're going to number three here. Abby McGee, we're gonna to go to ASU Women's Hockey. We talked about them earlier. Abby McGee, Reagan Smith said, she scores a lot and she's a defenseman. She sneaks one past GCU as ASU stays undefeated. ASU Women's Hockey off to a great start. Number three was sneaky, nothing sneaky about number two. A middle set ball by ASU Women's Volleyball. Megan Beatty, boom, across the other side. They ended up going on to beat Colorado in this match, but what a hit by Beatty. Unbelievable job by ASU Women's Volleyball. So at first I had the sneaky, then you had the power, but now I got the reflexes. Julia Cascapara, the ASU soccer goalie. Just look at the reflexes on this. A header comes at her, but she tips it right over the bar there. We're gonna see it about three more times because it's that good. Cascapara had 10 saves on the day, including a penalty save, and McKenna Carr of Washington, well, she was befuddled by this one. How does she not score that? Julia Cascapara had something to say about it, and she did not let in a goal right there, but she did earlier in the game. ASU lost 1-0. Unfortunately for ASU fans, Jacob. Yeah, you know, unfortunate for ASU fans, but that was a save right there. And you know what I feel like it's a save every single time? What's that? Every time you and I come on this show, we seem to get through it cleanly, and it always feels like a miracle, but it's like a planned miracle. It's always a planned miracle. Live TV is the, one of the best things out there, Jacob, and I think we do a pretty good job. We definitely do a very good job. And to those of you that watched us do whatever job you think it is we <laughs> did, we thank you very much for joining us this week on Cronkite Sports Live. And for Tyler Mannion, my name's Jacob Rudner, wishing you a great weekend. We'll see you next week.